Hello and welcome to the news in Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, reiterated His Majesty the King's confidence in Team Bahrain's efforts to combat COVID-19. His Royal Highness prays to His Majesty the King that the Kingdom is determined to fulfil his objective of overcoming the challenges presented by COVID-19 and ensure the health of the Kingdom's citizens and residents. His Royal Highness expressed his condolences to the families of those who have lost their lives and wish those who have COVID-19 a full and speedy recovery. His Royal Highness highlighted the efforts of the people of Bahrain, from those involved directly in maintaining public health to those whose dynamicism continues to sustain the economy, despite the challenges being faced. His Royal Highness ended by affirming the importance of uniting together to combat COVID-19 in line with His Majesty the King's directives, expressing confidence that Team Bahrain's incredible efforts will ensure the Kingdom and its people overcome these challenges. The Government Executive Committee held a meeting chaired by Deputy Prime Minister his Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa in the presence of the committee members. The Deputy Premier affirmed that the pandemic is an ongoing challenge that must be overcome and that it requires further commitment to the precautionary measures as prescribed by the national medical team. He affirmed the safety and health of the citizens and residents are the top priority as per the vision of His Majesty the King and the directors of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. His Highness also affirmed the importance of awareness of the risks of spreading the virus and called on all to vaccinate to allow the frontline workers to carry out their duties to protect society from harm. Based on the presentation by the medical team, the following measures were decided. Increasing the number of daily vaccinations, intensifying rapid testing, updating protocols for active cases and close contacts and suspending commercial activities with notable exceptions from May the 27th to June the 10th. Schools and training facilities will also be closed and working from home up to 70% capacity will be implemented. The committee affirmed the importance of continuing to observe all precautionary measures by all. The National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus yesterday held a press conference to highlight the efforts made to contain COVID-19. During the press conference, the task force announced new measures that take effect from May the 27th to June the 10th following approval from the Government Executive Committee. Decisions undertaken include closure of malls, commercial shops, restaurants and cafes, except for delivery and takeaway services, gyms and sports halls, swimming pools, beaches and recreational centres and cinemas. Events, conferences and social gatherings in homes are banned and salons, barbershops and beauty parlours are also closed. A work from home policy to cover 70% of the government employees is now in effect as well as suspending inpatient in-person learning at schools and higher education institutions, kindergartens, rehabilitation centres, nurseries and training centres, with the exception of attendance for international examinations. Current travel procedures to the Kingdom of Bahrain to remain in effect. The following activities remain in effect, hypermarkets, supermarkets, grocery stores, bakeries, gas filling stations, private health clinics with some exceptions, banks and currency exchange services and administrative offices whose activities are not to engage with customers. Also operative will be export and import distributors, automobile repair shops, construction, telecommunications and maintenance sector shops, factories and pharmacies. During the press conference, the Under Secretary at the Task Force, Dr Walid al Manah, outlined a number of decisions taken by the committee to reduce the spread of the virus as follows. 1. Expanding the capacity of daily vaccination at 31 vaccination centres across the Kingdom. 2. Increase the use of rapid antigen testing and allowing those with positive tests to go to drive through centres for PCR tests. 3. The price of rapid antigen tests will reduce from 3BD dinars to 2BD, reducing the market price to 2.5BD and allowing large companies to buy rapid testing for 2BD from the government stock with mandatory examination of employees who will not transition to remote work. 4. Home quarantine for those who test positive, while those over the age of 50 will be contacted by the Ministry and those with acute symptoms, chronic disease, can head to the treatment centre for assessment. 5. Update precautionary protocol for those who have been in close contact with a positive case. 
Close contacts of an active case must also quarantine at home as soon as they are informed of the status and the active of the quarantine feature on the Be Aware Bahrain application. Symptomatic close contact cases above 50 will be tested on their first and 10th day of the quarantine, while those aged 49 and below will be tested on the 10th day of the quarantine unless symptoms develop. Those who wish to get tested may go to a private clinic with a list to be shared soon. Amanah indicated that the medical capacity for the mild to critical cases will be expanded and priority will be given to recruiting citizens, including doctors and nurses, according to the required specialisations, and to pay remuneration to volunteers working within the national healthcare efforts, assigning the transfers of emergency cases to the private sector and restricting the call centre 444 to basic services only. He affirmed that the updated procedures are in response to data that reveals that the vast majority of active cases or contacts do not require medical follow-up. He also emphasised that Bahrain has the capacity to increase testing, isolation and treatment demands, alongside scaling up plans if required. The Under Secretary at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Iman al Dossari, reaffirmed the need for compliance with all precautionary measures to limit the spread of the virus. An infectious diseases consultant and microbiologist at BDF Hospital, a member of the task force, Lieutenant Colonel Dr Manaf al Ghathani, addressed the public's concern regarding taking early action to protect entry points, particularly airports, noting that the majority of cases are from the community spread. The consultant of infectious and internal diseases at Salmania Medical Complex, Dr Jamila al Salman, concluded by underlining the Ministry's commitment to continue to report full transparency and urge avoiding spreading rumours that may cause fear among the citizens and residents. The Representatives Council Speaker Fasir bin Abdullah Zainal commended the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa following the statement issued by the Government Executive Committee in its meeting yesterday. She stressed adherence to the precautionary measures. She described the Royal Directives and the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister as incentives to overcome the pandemic. She underscored the importance of cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities and pledged support to all decisions of the national medical team. Speaker of the Council of Representatives and Chairperson of the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Delegation, Vazir Zanal, chaired the Parliamentary Delegation participating in the 142nd Assembly of the Inter-Parliamentary Union, the IPU session. She affirmed that Bahrain has been successful with the leadership of His Majesty the King in taking proactive measures to contain the pandemic, based in support of human rights and public freedoms, thanks to the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Speaker noted that parliamentarians should aim to ensure that people of low-income countries have access to treatment and vaccines in order to reach societal immunity. Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh praised the reassuring message of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to citizens and residents on the Kingdom's ability to overcome the coronavirus pandemic. The Shura Council Chairman expressed pride and appreciation of Bahrain's achievements under the leadership of His Majesty the King in combating the pandemic and praised the tireless efforts of the Executive Committee, spearheaded by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Shura Council Chairman stressed Bahrain's keenness to mitigate the spread of the virus to protect citizens and residents alike. The Minister of Information, Ali bin Mohammed al Ramehi, paid tribute to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, hailing his keynote royal address, which reassured citizens and residents. He said that the royal message reflected His Majesty the King's keenness on protecting the health and safety of citizens and residents, as well as the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to combat the pandemic and achieve safety and security for all. Al Ramehi lauded the royal confidence in Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince which ensured pioneering achievements across various fields, along with frontline workers. Aramehi affirmed that the Ministry of Information and all of its affiliates will remain a fundamental supporter of the Bahrain team and a mirror for all national efforts in all fields. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and the Chairman of the Board of Bahrain Tourism Exhibition Authority, Zaid bin Rashid al Ziani, met with his Saudi counterpart, with whom the government's projects and the development of the bilateral ties in the field were discussed. The minister also met with his UAE counterpart, with whom further development of bilateral ties were discussed. 
He also met with the Iraqi Minister of Culture, Tourism and Antiquities to discuss the latest developments in the field of tourism in the region. The Minister also met the Jordan Tourism and Antiquities Minister, whereby the importance of exchange of expertise was affirmed. He also met with his counterpart from the Maldives, with whom the bilateral relations were discussed. Finally, the Minister met with his Lebanese counterpart, with whom he affirmed the importance of increasing economic exchange. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and his accompanying delegation participated in the 47th meeting of the Regional Committee of the World Tourism Organisation, the UNWTO, held in Riyadh. The meeting is chaired by the UAE with the participation of UNWTO Secretary General Zurab Polilakashvili, a number of Ministers of Tourism from the Middle East and representatives of the committee's member states. Alziani stressed the importance of the meeting at the time when the region is undergoing major changes to solve problems facing the tourism sector in the Middle East. The meeting discussed tourism field, including mainly 2020 to 2021 action plan and the delegation of the host country of the World Tourism Day 2023. Bahrain has been re-elected member of the Executive Council of the World Tourism Organization, the UNWTO, to represent the Middle East region, along with the United Arab Emirates during the 2021 to 2024 period. Bahrain was also re-elected member of the UNWTO's Credentials Committee during the elections held in the sidelines at the 47th meeting of the UNWTO's Regional Commission for the Middle East, organised by the Saudi Tourism Ministry. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism extended sincere congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad Benisa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He said that the achievement reflects His Majesty the King's aspirations and is the positive outcome of the government's support for the tourism sector. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism participated in the opening ceremony of the World Tourism Organisation, the UNWTO's Regional Bureau in Riyadh. The ceremony was held under the patronage of the UNWTO Secretary General, Zura Polilikashvili, and the Saudi Minister of Tourism, Ahmed Al Khatib, in the presence of a number of Ministers of Tourism. The session is held in conjunction with the Tourism Recovery Summit in Riyadh to coordinate policies and initiatives of 12 countries in the Middle East, promote tourism, products and cooperation in the field. The establishment of the first Tourism Academy in Riyadh was also announced. In line with the Royal Directors of His Majesty the King and in support of the discussions of the Government Executive Committee chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and in accordance with the recommendations of the National Medical Task Force for combating COVID-19, the Central Bank of Bahrain, the CBB, issued a circular to all retail banks and finance companies to provide the option of postponing loan repayments. The option to defer loan repayments for an additional period of six months applies to all individuals and companies until the 31st of December 2021. It will apply without referral f deferral fees any increase in the amount of instalments or increase in the interest or profit rate, provided that the interest rates supplied by the banks are calculated on these loans during the deferral period. The Governor of CBB, Rashid Al Maraj, stated that these arrangements were made in coordination with the financial sector to support various economic initiatives to alleviate the economic impacts of the pandemic and maintain a sustainable growth path. Based on the decisions issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, the General Directorate for Traffic called to benefit from the electronic services provided through the e-traffic application and the e-government portal. It noted that the visitors are restricted to entering the General Traffic Directorate building and the service centres of those who have received a coronavirus vaccination or those who have recovered from the virus over the age of 18 and must display the green logo in the Be Aware Bahrain application. It also stated that the provision of traffic services continues in the main building and in external centres with advanced appointments, commensurate with the precautionary measures. The Ministry of Education has directed schools to comply with the measures announced by the National Medical Task Force for combating COVID-19 and which were approved by the Executive Committee regarding suspension of students' in-person attendance at all public and private schools, higher education institutions and kindergartens, and switch to remote learning from May the 30th until June the 10th. The Ministry of Education said that the measures do not apply to students' attendance of international exams. 
The Ministry also committed to remote work policy at the rate of 70% and prepare the necessary schedules. The Ministry of Labour and Social Development announced the suspension of in-person attendance at licensed rehabilitation centres, nurseries and training institutes, directing people to switch to online learning. The move followed the decisions announced by the National Medical Task Force for combating COVID-19 and which were approved by the Executive Committee. The Ministry said that the precautionary suspension does not apply to international exams. It affirmed the importance of continuing to observe all precautionary measures to contain the pandemic. The National Oil and Gas Authority's Chief Executive Officer, Nasser Sultan Aswadi, signed a deal with Stockholm Environmental Institute to establish a national knowledge platform for the water sector in the Kingdom. That will be a reference for all information related to water and its various sectors. The platform will contain the decision support system that links data, studies, complex analytical models and data analysis tools by all water-related sectors to support decision-making to make appropriate decisions. To speak more about this issue, we are joined on the phone by the project manager of the Green Climate Fund, Engineer Hussein Maki. Hello, Engineer Hussein. Hi. Hello. Can you tell us Hello. more about the deal with Stockholm Environment Institute to establish a national knowledge platform for the water sector in the kingdom? Yes. Uh, today, Bahrain are on the path of implementing integrated water resources management. And to do that, uh, the knowledge platform, the knowledge management platform is needed as a part of the enabling environment as a tool for uh, integrated WRM. So our contract with the SEI, the well-known institute worldwide, is to design and develop the knowledge, uh, knowledge and climate management platform for the uh, water sector in Bahrain. But not only that, in our contract, we aim also to build the Bahrain capacity building as well as strengthening the cooperation between Bahrain and international leading company and institution as the uh, as, uh, CI one of them. This will save the preservation of the natural resources, uh, particularly water resources that aimed in our national water strategy 2030. And how does this platform further contribute to Bahrain's efforts in preserving its natural resources? Yep. Uh, the knowledge management platform will include, as, uh, as we said, DSS, decision support system, as enabling tools for implementing uh, IWRM. This system will support the ministers, uh, WRC ministers, in prioritizing their national project, preservation project of the natural resources, as well as uh, to support them for allocating the desired budget for that uh, project. So uh, we will collect the data. Uh, including the climatic services data, water resources data, uh, population, uh, water sectors data, all data related to that uh, project or to that uh, subject, and include them in this system to, the, to take the right, the right decision. In our platform, uh, we will have three level, uh, three level uh, categories. Number one is uh, we targeted the minister's uh, decision. Uh, WRC minister. The second one is for the decision maker on the ministries, while the third one is for the public and uh, for the researcher to enhance public awareness and uh, enhance the researcher, the research in Bahrain. And that was project manager of the Green Climate Fund, engineer Hussein Maki. Thank you for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 892,030 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 746,062 had taken the second. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 25,812 with 1,493 recoveries, 2,803 registered new cases. 1,125 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 1,671 are contacts of active cases and seven are travel related. The Ministry also announced nine deaths from COVID-19 today and expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.